before we get into today's episode, I do want to thank everyone that came out to support in today's meetup game. It was something that was very impromptu, very last minute. I didn't really know about it. I actually didn't mention to anyone that followed my uh, follows close to broke, but I met so many awesome followers. There's too many to name. I can't thank you guys enough from the bottom of my heart. Um, it means the world to me that you guys are so sweet to me. So if you guys would just do me a favor, click the like button, drop a comment. Let me know if I saw you today or if I didn't get to see you, but you were there. I'm, I mean, I can't say sorry enough. Obviously, with the mask, it's hard to tell who the hell is who. Uh, but make sure to comment, like, subscribe, do all the good stuff. I can't thank you guys enough for watching today's episode. Today's episode is an absolute blast. As you guys can read from the title, the first two hands I play, I get all in. So pretty insane. Pretty fun vlog. I can say that. Anyways, we'll see you guys at the end of the video. Es que esa mierda te la tenés que comer caliente y con los dedos. Did me wrong. I can't live. Oh my heart. On my sleeve. We fight, we fight. It's all too much. You said I'm just too hard to love. So far. Well, well, well. If it isn't your least favorite poker vlogger back, it's been what seems like an eternity, but it is an absolute pleasure to be back and to what feels like home. You know, I feel like, you know, it's got to put my little fucking bathrobe on and I'm just here and I'm super excited to have you guys nonetheless. So the very first hand of note, and if you're reading the title, it is absolutely not clickbait. I mean it when I say it, we are all in on the very first hand and this is how it happened. So the OMC of the table. And when I'm saying OMC, I mean OMC. Decides to open it up for $25. Yes, you heard that correct. 8X the big blind. I looked down an ace jack of diamonds in the big blind. Absolutely no way in hell that I can be throwing away this hand. Uh, we are actually playing 1-3 with a $200 max. Significantly smaller than I'm used to playing, but... I cannot describe how refreshing it is to play poker and absolutely not care in the slightest if I lose or win. The small blind decides to call as well and we go to a flop. The flop is jack, six, deuce with two spades. Pretty much the best flop we can hope for. The small blind decides to check. The middle position OMC decides $25 is the right amount once again. And uh, considering that's about a third of the pot, I look down at my hand. Again, still hasn't changed. Ace jack of diamonds can't really do anything besides just call here if he's ahead he's way ahead that includes queens plus i don't think he's gonna have ace king in his range here unfortunately AMC, uh, omcs believe in limping those hands nowadays for whatever reason so not that he can't have it i just don't think his c bet frequency is very often uh any player that's over the age of 65 just doesn't seem like it's uh really within their wheelhouse nonetheless i decided to make the call and the small blind folds the turn seems like a fine card it's a seven uh again the flush draw still hasn't come in he decides at this point it'd be better to bet forty dollars and at that price once again if i'm still ahead i'm way ahead and if he's and if i'm behind i'm still way behind so i decide to just make the call as well the river is an interesting card if if i do say so myself it's the ace of spades and what's more interesting, besides the fact that the front door flush did get there, is that OMC decides to check. OMC's obviously, you know, a little sneaky beaver or something. I don't know what he's doing, but let's just think about briefly the hands that he can definitely have here. Uh, hands like kings, queens will easily be in his range, which will go into check call mode. Um, not only those hands, but hands like ace king, I guess. Ace queen, if he's just a really in tune OMC that's, really knows about the barrel barrel the barrel barrel check call he's all about that life most of his hands i think on this river are going to be something along the line of check calls and i think that i have to be targeting that with a fairly uh as some would say catch all price so i don't want to bet too big here i don't want to bet something insane so i decide to bet exactly 75 dollars and without much thinking to all of our surprises the omc decides to jam Yes, he jams, and I have about 35-ish dollars left behind, I think, give or take. And there's just no way I can fold top two pair. And obviously, I'm just most likely going to have the worst hand here unless he's just an absolute psycho and has like ace-king for some reason and turn this into 
some kind of like merge value bluff range. I don't know. But anyways, we decided to call it off. And yes, unfortunately, top two pairs, no good. But not because he had a flush. He turned a set of sevens. Literally the next hand. I don't even have enough time to get my chips out on the table, it feels like. And I look down at, yes, ace jack of diamonds once again. I am not kidding. I, I couldn't believe it either. Anyways, um, I am in the straddle at this point. Early, early position decides to limp for $6. It limps about two or three ways until it gets to the, to the button once again, which is the OMC. Yes, our favorite player, the OMC, is back and wants more. So... At this point, I actually had to go to the ATM because I didn't bring enough cash and come back and reload. So by this time, I'm under the gun. I have the straddle on and OMC has a button. OMC decides to make it 40-ish dollars or $45. The big blind decides to jam for what is around 45 to $55, somewhere in that range. Excuse me for not being extremely particular. But with Ace Jack of Diamonds here, I want to get it heads up. There's so much dead money in the middle. And again... With the starting stacks being at $200 effective, me being the effective stack, there's just no way that I can't be jamming all in here, I don't think. So with all that being said, I decided to jam, obviously, because that's the aggressive way to play play poker. And when you're playing uh, smaller stakes, it feels fun. It's like a rush, and you feel like there's no repercussions. Uh, so I decided to jam. The small blind, or excuse me, the under-the-gun two player, the limper, decides to call off $200. Yes, limp, the old limp $6 call off for 200 decides to call it off. I couldn't believe it either. And then the OMC decides to fold. So now we are three ways to the flop, which comes seven, nine, ten. The turn is a four and the river is a deuce. We absolutely break the hell out. We announced that we have ace high. Big blind mucks and the under the gun player shows pocket sixes. So yet again, we are outdone. And can you believe it? First two hands in the session and we have lost both of them somehow. Just like that, we say goodbye to two buy-ins. Yes, two hands in and we have lost two all-ins. In early position, I decide to open King 10 offsuit to $15. Obviously in this lineup, and these stakes, I feel pretty confident in where I'm at, and I feel like my game is pretty decent. So opening my range, uh, pretty much from any position, I feel pretty comfortable. Uh, obviously, that goes with like a double-edged sword. You got to be careful. You can't be too much of a donk because, you know, I love to do that. Anyways, our favorite player that I guess we're exclusively playing hands with at this point decides to call my $15, as well as another gentleman with about a $70 effective stack on the button. Anyways, we go to a flop. The flop is king 6-4 with two hearts. I decide to see bet here for $25. Again, going for around 45 to 50% pot. At this point, flopping top pair on a flushy board against two other players, one of them being a small stack. I think it's a, a pretty reasonable sizing. The player to my left decides to call as well as the $70 uh, effective stack on the button. Pretty much ABC poker to this point. The turn comes the eight of clubs. No real straights or flushes that we're thinking of really get there, I don't think. Uh, besides the five seven, I decide to bet once again for value for $45, which would be targeting mostly the button would be going all in at that amount. Uh, but to my surprise, the gentleman to my left decides to raise to $115. The gentleman that I was targeting initially on the button with $70 to start the hand decides to go all in for around that price of $45 and it's back to me at this point sitting with about $260 total it's for me considering I'm the effective stack uh, it's on me if I want to just jam and think that my top pair is good here or in some ways merge it and then lastly be able to get away from a from a hand besides the obvious hand which is 5-7 I guess there's just not many combos of 5-7 suited that make up his range. I think a lot of his range will be middling pairs, absolute bluffs, and then some king 10, king jack, king queen that in some universes I can get to fold with a little bit of fold equity I have left. Not only that, I think the gentleman to my left is pretty certain that I'm targeting him by this point. 
We've played quite a few pots together. And not that there's any negativity. The guy's an absolute sweetheart. Had a wonderful time. We talk quite a bit, actually. I just think that at this point, there's a little bit of a leveling war. And although that goes against everything theoretical and what I usually preach and abide by, when you play these stakes, it's just sometimes you got to be a little more in tune with your environment and understand the table dynamics. With all that being said, there's just not much more I can do here in my heart than I think besides folding or jamming all in. I don't think it makes sense putting half my stack here and leaving an insanely stupid SPR, which is stack to pot ratio on the river, which would be like 40% pot. Just wouldn't make any sense. Anyways, I decided to do just that, maximize my fold equity while I got it. I jammed for just under 270-ish dollars. And the gentleman to my left, surprisingly, like snap folds. So obviously he was buffing, I guess. Uh, I show my hand king 10 and uh, the river comes out of seven. The spade is completely bricks and I end up scooping the pot. So just to be shown there, uh, at these stakes, again, it's very different. And forgive me for not being super educational in some aspects. So after finally building on that momentum, we feel pretty good. We feel pretty great. We move to a table with Think Blue Poker as well as a uh, happy face holding me. And uh, yeah, the vibes are good. Richard's at my table. Shout out to, to Richard. He's actually the reason I came to Meetup Game. He was a big factor in getting all this put together. So can't thank him enough for the invitation and the kind words and the uh, pretty much just gassing me up. I mean, who can, who can say no to that? Anyways, this next hand does involve him and we're going to try to speed through this one here. It limps to him in the small and the uh, button, excuse me. He decides to make it $15. I look down at my hand, which is pocket sevens, and $15 is just the right amount. The other two limpers decide that's fair and decide to call as well. The flop is king seven six, absolute gin. It's rainbow. We could not have asked for anything better. Everybody checks over to Richard. Richard's on the button and decides to bet $25. $25 is just fine. The thing that we have to ask ourselves now is do we want to build a pot right now? Or do we want to play it slowly and allow the players behind us to make a misstep? At the, at the time in my head, considering the flop was so gosh darn dry, I didn't think there was too many big draws that I was too afraid of. I was almost positive that all of these were like decently made hands. And uh, most of them are just pairs, right? And I don't know if at the time we were playing about $400 uh, dollars effective, which is well over 100 big blinds. I didn't think that getting 130 big blinds in on the flop with just one pair was something that was going to be feasible. So I don't think raisins really an uh, like isn't the optimal optimal option. I think just flatting, which I end up doing, is the best play to kind of entice some action behind me and cause a slip up in that regard. It doesn't work out in my favor though, unfortunately. The two players left behind to act decide to fold, but no problem. We are heads up with our friend Richard here. The turn comes, the five of hearts. So only the 8-9 that I was afraid of gets there. But besides that, I don't think Richard has too many suited combos, or not a great deal of them, I'd say, in his range. And not only that, I think for his sizing on the flop, uh, his range is still fairly wide. So there's going to be more than just that straight draw top pair. I think there'll be a lot more than just that in his range. And obviously that being the case, I decided to bet $50. Again, doing a catch all here. Um, there's some combinations of nine, 10 in his range. Uh, gut shots that I want him to continue with. There's some portions of king, uh, of single pair kings, like king, jack, king, queen, as well as quite a few pocket jacks, pocket tens, pocket eights. Um, all those hands that I'm still beating that I still want to get value from. So I go for that catch all bet sizing of $50 and he decides that that's fine and decides to make the call as well. We go to the river. The river is to me at the time, a wonderful card. It's the ace of hearts. Uh, the reason I think it, it's a good card at this moment is because obviously the ace is always going to favor the initial raisers, a uh, range. So in my head, I'm thinking, you know, if he has ace king, uh, if he has ace queen, ace jack hands that he's, uh, Floating on the turn with with some equity, um, you know, okay, this is just a great card for me to just barrel on. Uh, but not only that, I do understand that I don't beat a great portion of his super value range, which is top set, middle set. So with that being the case, I think, uh, again, a smaller sizing, a 50-ish percent pot sizing is perfect. I decided to do just that, and I bet $100. And uh, to my uh, dismay, he calls and shows ninth and a heart. So nothing is better. Nothing. There's nothing funner than going runner runner. Am I right? Unfortunately for me, I do lose the hand. And 
it was a complete lapse in judgment and a complete misunderstanding of the situation obviously that's a poor river card for me but to make myself feel better we'll just lie and say that i block bet and didn't call a bigger bet on the river Rich, hey guys. Me in the hand. oh that was i got lucky no, 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 i got no, lucky <laughs> you took my money but i don't think anybody deserves it more than this gentleman thank you appreciate it out. thanks for your love dude thank you the vlog appreciates you thank you thank you a couple hands later we look down at a6 of hearts first to act after straddle our friend richard is in the straddle i decide to raise it to 25 everyone folds it gets to richard and he thinks that he shouldn't but decides to make the call for 25. the flop is nine seven five so we flop ourselves a pretty decent hand we have a gut shot as well as a flush draw because there's two hearts on board at this situation i decide to bet 35 dollars and richard without much thinking immediately calls so uh obviously you can't put him on too many hands i uh, don't want to dive too much into the like whole fast calling usually weak situation the turn is the queen of spades so we don't get our flush here um but i think again this is a card that's wonderful for my range and it's like ace queen of hearts are gonna barrel again and it's like ace uh ace queen offsuit a lot of combos of those two hands a lot of king queens that are just c bets on the flop quite a few hands connect with this turn card obviously and when it checks to me richard checks to me i decide to bet 70 dollars for the bluffs that I'm going to have in this range, obviously the flush draw that I have now, as well as like jacked in the hearts, uh, jacked in suited, right turn uh, a hand like this into a bluff. Uh, those are the two main hands that I'm going to be having in my bluff range here, obviously. So raising first to act after the straddle. But without much thinking, Richard decides to raise to $210. In this situation, considering how much I am stack committed, there's just no way I can fold, I don't think, here, unfortunately. Um, there's so much money in the middle and I've, I don't know if I'm getting the right price to call and to be honest Like we talked about at the beginning of this vlog. That's not really the point of this whole thing I'm kind of here to gamble and have fun okay. And obviously I think I'm just too much stack committed uh, pot committed excuse me at this yes, point I think if I go and so stick it in going. for about yeah 215 50 ish dollars Obviously close. Richard calls the river comes Does it bail us out? Yeah, No, it doesn't of course it doesn't the river is uh, a seven again, I think. Uh, Richard decides to show his top set or top, oh, he has pocket nines. So he flopped top set there. Obviously, the nut low hand I could be against. It's unfortunate. Um, great hand for him. Uh, Richard was just here to take my money today. Uh, if I was going to give it to anyone, though, I'm happy it went to one of the lovely watchers of the vlog. So. This next hand is probably my best played hand of the night, so buckle up. This was an absolute banger of a hand. Anyways, look down at Queen Jack of Diamonds to cite $25 is sufficient. Go ahead and raise it up. At this point, the straddle is pretty much mandatory. It's on every hand. The gentleman to my left, Juan, uh, shout out to him, another very wonderful gentleman and friend of the vlog, decides to call. This is only his second time ever playing live poker, so uh, awesome to see people that are new to poker, fresh to poker. That's the whole point of this. That's why vlogging is so important, by the way. We want to continue to grow the game of poker. There's a lovely gentleman. I wish I caught your name. Friend of the vlog and an absolute awesome. He's a crusher. He's, he's good at the game of poker. He looks down at his hand from the button and decides to make it $100. Three bets, me, 4x. Pretty perfect sizing, if I'm being fair. And it gets back to me. And considering I'm playing it with a $400 effective stack, $450-ish, somewhere in that range, well over 150 big blinds by this point. There's no way that I'm going to fold. This hand is just way too strong. It's going to be one thing that you'll learn, especially for my style of poker, is defending against three bets, especially when they're at this favorable of sizing. 4X is nice, but it's definitely not enough for me to fold. So I go and make the call. Juan to my left, and the cutoff decides to fold. The flop is 666. Six, six. I decide to check it, and our lovely friend in the button decides to C bet for $60. Obviously, with this C bet, he is going for that 30% pot bet, that catch all, that complete range bet on the flop. And that's exactly what I take it for. I think this is an absolute full range bet, just continuing to use his aggression without putting too much money. And by this point, again, I'm just the effective stack at this point with around 350 ish dollars behind. And for this amount of money, there's just no way I can fold with the opportunity to hit a queen, a jack, running diamonds. There's quite a few ways to win the hand, obviously, as well as bluffing at it. So I decide to make the float here. 
The turn is a great card for me, all things considered. It's a four of diamonds. And after quite a bit of thinking, there's just no way I can play this hand besides turning my hand into a bluff and being super aggressive. I decide to bet pot and jam it. Yes, you might be asking, whoa, what the hell just happened, Kieran? And hear me out. Look, when we float the flop and we get the nut turn that doesn't make us, you know, obviously have a boat here, by getting that turn card, we're going to be able to fold out ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, king highs. There's so many hands we get to fold out. And then even hands that are like sevens, eights, and nines, um, and even tens, now we're put in this weird predicament where it's kind of like, do I want to play for my whole stack? I mean, do I want to do I want to call off what is equivalent to a hundred big blinds on the turn? And that's the point of this bet. This bet is to really target the ace highs again by him bidding that sizing on the flop, which is again his whole range because that bet is so small. Uh, I'm really able to put his entire range in an absolute blender, and without thinking too much, he decides on a fold so super happy again friend of the vlog he ended up telling me that he folded queen uh king jack obviously a better hand than ours completely dominated pre-flop uh loved his sizing all the way through and it's unfortunate for him that the diamond came on the turn obviously i was gonna absolutely punt it away if i could if a king or a jack came uh, but nonetheless absolutely happy with the way i played the hand it's super fun putting on the pressure and being aggressive and I'm not saying floating is going to work every time because God knows that is not a that is not a fact. But when you're put in these positions, it's really fun to put the pressure on. I uh, haven't lost all my money yet. It came close, obviously, as you guys can see. Kind of a crazy uh, go of it so far. Yeah, all the all the fellow vloggers that were kind enough to uh, be, be kind to me and, and open me with open arms for their mugs game means a lot to me. So now i got to learn about how to kind of network better because... The goal is obviously to start doing some of these things myself. Eventually, we'll get out to doing some more stuff. But as of now, we're gonna learn. So anyways, let's head back to the table. I don't even know how much, I probably have like six or 700 in front of me. I think I'm in the game for like 800 bucks. No, like 1100 bucks. I don't even remember, to be honest. I'm here to have a good time, lose some money. It's all good. It's all good at the end of the day. So whatever, I'll see you guys in a bit. Let's head back to the table. This next hand is pretty ABC, but there's no way I can include it because we get pocket aces in the small blinds. Of course, we got to get the thumbnail in there somehow. Anyways, like I mentioned, we pick up pocket aces. It limps what feels like six ways or something like that. And it gets to me in the small blind, and I decide to pump it up to $40. If I'm not mistaken, there's already $40 or somewhere in that realm of dead money in the middle. Only the uh, middle position player calls. Once it gets over to me, the flop is king, deuce, deuce. Again, a pretty dry, super dry, Sahara Desert type vibes, dry. There's no way that I'm be getting too much value here. So sure, checking is great, but obviously at this point I'm stuck. So I'm trying to build pots without being too overwhelming. I decide to down bet to 30 or $35. And after quite a bit of tanking, unfortunately, my opponent folds. So... You know, unfortunately, didn't get a big pot with our pocket aces tonight. But you know, they're pretty, they're pretty to look at. For the very final hand of the vlog. If you made it to this point, thank you so much. We got another banger of a hand. Um, pretty simple, what it may seem like, but there's some little things that you guys should take away from it. Nonetheless, I am in the straddle, and it falls all the way to the small blind who decides to just limp. The gentleman to my right decides to fold, which was Richard, and it gets to me in the straddle. I look down at ace, queen, offsuit, ace of spades, queen of clubs, I believe. I decide to make it $25, I believe, pre-flop, and just the gentleman in the small blind decides to call. The flop is 6-7 deuce, completely rainbow. I decide to down bet here again, that catch all, definitely a range bet on the flop. For $15, the gentleman on my right just calls. The turn card is a 9. Again, the full rainbow is now out there. The gentleman to my right decides to check once again. And at this point, it's time to put on the pressure. I look down at my hand to make sure I got what I got, which is ace-queen, nothing but ace-high. But two big things, obviously, the removal, the blockers. I can definitely have aces and queens played in this way. 
especially when it folds all the way in the big blind right somebody's got to have a hand so at this point it's time to put the pressure on i bet about 85 to 90 percent pot here and the gentleman to my right decides after a little bit of thinking that that is too much and makes the fold so a small pot in relation to the grand scheme of things but remember put the pressure on every pro in the world will tell you pressure aggression does pay off everybody so i'm here with the boy think blue poker if you guys don't subscribe to him already uh it would mean a lot to him and me if you guys actually want to support him he's one of the lovely people that's actually throwing the game how'd you get the idea uh me richard happy and uh jeff we all in uh fish poker we decided uh, we want to do a meetup game because they had done one in vegas so we wanted to do one here in la because most of us are play out here a lot cool uh what kind of stakes do you usually play i'm playing two three two five and also been dabbling in the five five room dope man well i i hope we, you know please if you haven't already go check him out on youtube uh, and instagram think blue poker as well where can they find you at where's uh, all that so jeff stimson uh, just go by the name jeff stimson uh same on instagram same on youtube make it uh, make it pretty easy there so or if you type in poker joker 52 you'll find me that way too all righty uh what kind of stakes do you play what, what can they expect when they head over to you uh typically out in vegas i'm the one three of the two five games right now you're from vegas yeah. actually. yeah yeah i live in vegas yeah okay. so i made the trip out here uh, to do this with uh, think blue uh fish poker happy face hold them so they invited me out to do that so that's what we're doing Cool. Well, thank you guys again for stopping by. Make sure to subscribe to him. If it's too hard to remember his name, I'm going to put all the links in the description. Please subscribe, follow, do all that. You know, show the faith from our side and support some fellow. Uh, this is like a collaboration, so support the yeah. fellow blogger. Thank you again, Jeff. It's an absolute yeah. pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks it. For Thanks having for coming out. This is awesome. Hey, guys, I'm here with yet another golden god, Fish Poker. If you guys haven't checked them out already, where can they find you? Uh, YouTube. We got to go on to Fish Poker and just like subscribe that really helps out the channel yes sir and you know the drill make sure to collaborate you know it's your part if you guys are coming through to watch my videos it'd mean the world to me if you guys checked out all these vloggers especially fish he's hosting the game he's treating me like family if you guys ever want to do this you got to check out his youtube channels though do you have an instagram where they can find you uh, fish underscore poker thank you guys for stopping by and like i said check them out on youtube if you haven't already if you haven't checked them out already happy face hold them can, where sense? can they find you on instagram uh, on instagram happy face hold them look at this Premier Brandy. You gotta have the same name all the way through Everywhere. if you didn't know already. Uh, again, they were kind enough to invite me to their game. Shout out to Richard. Shout out to everybody putting this on. It means the world to me. Uh, is there anything that you can add on? What kind of stakes do you play? What can they find when they go to your uh, channel? Two, three, five, five. Uh, you're just crushing it over at Commerce. I know you play over cool. there. And, uh, you know, not. Maybe not the best player, but just uh, good content. But you get a happy face. Thanks for joining us. Who doesn't want to see a happy face? What an awesome experience. So I'm sure a lot of you guys know I don't get out to play poker much anymore. So, But I'm going to do these vlogs because it's important for me to keep this connection because C2B will never die. I talk about this all the time. Anyways, this is the first time I've ever had the chance to actually meet the people that is what makes me want to play. At this point in my life, I play poker. Obviously, the goal is to make money. I'm not out here to, you know... We've done, we're doing enough giveaways. That's the point. It's an absolute great time here at the, uh, the game, closing out the vlog. Again, big thank you to everybody that, that supported us. An insane amount of people that actually came through and, and said hi. I dropped over some, uh, some close to broke patches, obviously. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure to be here. I couldn't have uh, been happier to come down a better group of guys. They got like five tables going on a Saturday. And I didn't even promote the game at all, obviously. So good thing for you guys is you get a vlog out of it bad thing for us is obviously we lost money but if i could ever lose money if i could only lose money in poker i'd only lose it to these group of guys i mean one a lot of them were supporters of the vlog so they support you know what we do here and the other big thing is that uh fucking good people they're good humans they work hard um you forget that like most people that are playing two five and under five ten and under you know, a lot of these guys have real jobs. They're like hardworking fucking Americans. Um, and that's fucking awesome. If I'm going to lose money, I'm happy to lose it. Not to another, you know, Timmy playing poker that's just trying to take me out of my money. It's awesome to lose to people that are hardworking. So if you guys haven't seen it already, check out the last video. Doing a huge giveaway like I mentioned in the beginning. It's free money. Literally thousands of dollars is going to be going into this. So do me a favor. It's absolutely free. Check out the last vlog. It'll be the best decision you ever make in your life. Poker-wise, it's a free roll. I don't think we can do anything better than this. It means the world to me that you guys are out here. 
And until the next time, it's your boy, Close to Brogues out. Deuces! Did me wrong, I can't.